Right, good evening everyone. My name's Dina Romero and I'm the leader of Bath and North East Somerset Council. Welcome to tonight's webinar where we'll be hearing from young people about why Black Lives Matter and also on racism. If you haven't already done so, please watch the Black Lives Matters film made by Boys in Mind. It is incredibly powerful and gives a real insight into present day young black lives. This is the second webinar on black lives following the brutal murder of George Floyd on May the 25th. Please check out the previous one, which focuses on slavery from the past to now and how this awful period of history has shaped Bath and North East Somerset. In a moment, I will hand over to the young people to share how they've been feeling and to get their ideas on what's needs, what needs to change. Before I do, I would like to introduce Mary Kearney Knowles, who is the Director of Children's Services, and also Councillor Kevin Guy, who is the Cabinet Member for Children's Services, both of whom are joining myself and the young people on this panel. And all three of us will, you know, our main role here is to, to listen, and that's what we shall be doing. So, without further ado, I'm now going to ask each of the young people to uh, answer the first question and also to introduce themselves. So the first question that uh, each has been given is this. How are you, the young people you represent, feeling about recent events, including the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement? Is there anything you want to share about racism, inequality in Bath and North East Somerset that you have experienced or observed? So I'd like to invite Lucia to, uh, to start us off, please. Thank you. I'm Lucia Vineyard and I'm 19 years old and I'm here on behalf of Boys and Mind, Girls Mind Too. Um, as mentioned before, we've recently just done a video talking about um, some young people in Bath's experiences with racism. And that was sort of a response to the George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement that's been going on recently. Um, and I guess sort of with the recent events, it's been such a, a mix of emotions because obviously what happened to George Floyd was devastating and it's awful. Um, and this isn't the first of that kind of police brutality that's gone on. It's sort of one of many, but it's sparked such a big movement and it's, it's, it's blown up so much more than I thought it would ever blow up. Um, when the movement first happened, I sort of thought, is this just going to be a trend? Is this going to fade out? Are people going to forget about it? And it's been pretty overwhelming how much it's grown, uh, the response we've got for our video. Um, and I, as a mixed race person in Bath, I've lived in Bath my whole life. I'm 19 years old and I've experienced multiple racism. I've been called dirty in the street. I've been called the n-word more times than I can remember. I've been treated differently by my teachers, by my peers, just because of the colour of my skin. And I sort of didn't know where to turn. I thought I had no one to support me. And this movement has really sort of provided a comfort blanket for me in terms of realising that other people are there to support me. And I think that's really important for me because I think that younger people I want them to have the support that I didn't feel that I had, you know, and I think this movement is really allowing younger people to feel supported and like they're not alone. Thank you very much, Lucia. Um, I'd like to invite Dee now to uh, answer the, the same question. Um, and I know that you, you're from Bath Spa University, which I, I hope gives you, uh, you know, a, a, another perspective. Yeah, that's fine. Hi, I'm Dee or Darmanel and I'm from Basketball University. I'm also the BME rep at Basketball University. And in terms of the events that have happened over the last year, I think what makes this year so special is that, first of all, with George Floyd, like, that was a filmed event. Usually when you hear about these stories, if people can necessarily kind of dissociate themselves from these events because they can't see it. They can choose to deny it if you know what I mean whereas George Floyd because it was filmed because it was shown around because it was put everywhere on social media this was harder to ignore and harder to deny and um because we come from such I think our generation compared to generations before us um are more progressive we are more kind of involved in um activism is, is that the right word I don't know but um in doing activist 
um, stuff with like movements and whether that be like LGBTQ movements, whether that be Black Lives Matter movements, we as a generation are more kind of involved in social kind of injustices. And I think that has kind of helped brought like the Black Lives Matter movement to where it is today because with that, with you have that power behind you and um, yeah, the more power you have behind it, the more the message gets spread across. And also with kind of social media around as well, people, um, you know, I, I mm, give me two seconds. Uh, with people, you tend to like um, surround yourselves with people similar to you. So I feel like, especially for me personally, I on social media have seen a lot of people who support similar kind of in, um, social kind of system, like systems, social kind of policies and that we have the same ideas basically. And because you have the same ideas, it's hard to kind of imagine that there are people out there who are on the opposite spectrum to me, who believe that um, racism is not as bad as it is and that, you know, they have weird and outdated versions of like what black people are like and what people of color are like because, um, I'm so, I would say I'm in a bubble, which is very easy to do, especially on social media. So I think, especially with this year, because such terrible events have happened, it's been easy to get out of that bubble and kind of just see that not everyone thinks the same and it's made people more proactive in that sense. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Dee. That was really, really insightful. Um, so uh, now Rochelle, um, can you let us know what, what your thoughts are on, on this question? My thoughts on this question, um, how, well, I'm personally feeling, because I'm representing myself, I'm a University of Bath student, but I'm here as me, and as if how I'm feeling is tired, just very tired, because all these issues that are coming up, they're not new. The research has been done. You know, th this is not something that's like surprise, police brutality, it wasn't like a surprise. And it, for me, it was, very upsetting to see that to humanize black people it, to this level that's what it took to watch a black man's life stolen from him that's what it took and even then Breonna Taylor like the fight that it's taken to even get justice for her it's like very tired and in terms of experiences of racism at university I feel like the problem is we don't have anyone to talk to that's the problem with all the stuff that's going for if you go to university and you're like hey, can I talk to a black counselor, somebody with a lived experience of being black to talk about these issues with, who's gonna understand? There's not a single person with lived experience of being black to support us through this. And it's like, we're expected to talk about these issues and to express how they hurt and how we feel, but we don't have anybody to talk to, to process emotions. So I guess, yeah, it's how I feel is tired and feeling that we don't really have the support that we deserve to get us through this. That's how I feel. <laughs> Thank you, Rochelle. And that's really kind of moving to, to, to hear that. And you know, I think that will be, you know, opening up a lot of questions, I, I would hope, at the university, ones that I, I would also hope that they're going to find solutions for. Um, Indra. Hi, I'm Indra and I'm a member of Youth Parliament for Baines. Um, I think the murder of George Floyd caused me and my friends to feel horrified and devastated by the injustice of his death. I think it made us actually realise how unaware we were and how it sparked like a whole new wave of like personal learning. Um, and I think we're very angry at the police and government who actually have the upper ground, who are abusing their powers and ALM supporters who blame the events on BLM protesting, saying if maybe they did it more peacefully, maybe something would change. There seems to be the bare minimum done to the people who are actually guilty. I also think the timing in which the murder happened was crucial. I think the combination of lockdown gave us the chance to actually be activists and gave us an opportunity to reflect on the racism in our systems. And it also gave us the time to like not be taken away by our busy lives. And we had a time to actually soak in what is wrong with our worlds. And there was not only protests in America, there was action happening right here, right next door in Bristol with the Colston statue being pulled down. I think it also sparked a massive social media movement because we were all at home. So, so it kind of became a trend, which in some ways was a good thing, but it was also a negative. Like due to social media, like it gave me a chance to sort of gain some awareness and sign petitions, but like it isn't enough. Like I only know the bare minimum of what should be known by everyone. 
And although it brought awareness, there are many cases of just posting a black screen. You can't just post a black screen, like you can't just share a story, like you have to do more. Also, people were tokenizing it and maybe using it as like an online aesthetic. Like it's not something that should be cute. It should be a serious issue that should be taken seriously. Also on returning to school and post lockdown life, I kind of felt as if the conversation had been lost a little bit because everyone was already so busy. But I think small changes have been made, like actually being here is very important and we're having the conversations again. I just don't want the awareness to be lost. Thank you, Indra. And that was certainly the intention of this webinar was to you know, keep that conversation going and, and not lose that momentum and not sort of be able to say, well, we've We've done our bit we've ticked that box you know this is about making it live and, and, and making it really matter ben hi there uh, my name is ben notis i'm 17 and i am representing bath college today yeah um george floyd brianna taylor hamid every everyone that has died in uh <laughs> this, this time of this year is it's been very sad and very heartfelt and obviously it's quite hard, especially as like, there feels that such like a disconnect such, but like, yeah, a connection at the same time for the people that have died over in America and have faced injustice, but at the same time, this has been the case for like in, in the UK for like hundreds of years, honestly. And like, it's hard to even just register it sometimes like, like growing up, uh, I mean, Bath is obviously a predominantly white um, city. And whilst I'm not complaining about anyone I've known here, it's obviously sometimes, hard, you know, being kind of hard to relate to people or at least um, make friends that seem more diverse and sort of understand what I might feel or I'm going through. So um, obviously doing things like uh, this webinar and uh, the Boys in Mind video have been very good because it sort of like allows me to sort of share a bit of my life to like tons and tons of people without having just to you know go through like a long long talk and um i don't know like in lockdown obviously everyone's felt like a great amount of pressure just on them whether that's just like to stay inside and just to follow rules and stuff like that but with all these events that have happened i think it's been it's been quite sweet to see everyone connect and come together and protest and like Indra was saying before, and some other people were saying before, it's quite, also it's been a bit bad just to see people like, those who use it as a trend and those who actually care for it. So I'm glad it's lasted till it has now, but at the same time, I think there still needs to be steps that, to push forward. So, yeah. Thank you, Ben. So very, very um, useful comments from, from you too. Um, so, the final person I'd like to answer this question is Joshua. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Joshua Kumu and I am representing uh, Black Families. Um, to be honest, I cannot say for the rest of my group and Black Families what, they, what Black Lives Matter means to them. So um, what it means to me is the murder of George Floyd. It was, it was yeah, hard to see as because the, another one, it's just another more police brutality. It's, it's, just, it's just sad, honestly, because it's, it's uh, I don't know how to properly explain, but it's just another one of uh, Leona Taylor and everyone. There's so many pe black people in America and everywhere around the world just dying due to the hands of racism, whether it be over or covert. And it's, it's very, it's very sad. Um, um, black, what Black Lives Matter means to me, it's kind of that, it's like the door that allows me to fight, fight the, like the racism that's happening all around the world. And, and, and I believe that when, when, we, when we don't have to keep saying uh, Black Lives Matter, that's when I think that's when uh, equality will be striving because this fight has been going on for over, about 400 years since ever since slavery, been been fighting to regain our rights, equal rights across across the world for everything. And until we can stop saying a Black Lives Matter, and that's I think that's when it may be wrong, but I that's when I think that ever say, say we're equal and and it's because obviously all lives do matter, but then at the moment 
all you don't see white lives getting killed on this on the street just for the color of their skin because they seem different and they're judged differently based on their skin because as a black man in a black youth in bath i've been called the n-word many times ever since i was a child and since primary since primary school and so by drive-bys on the bus people just shouting the n-word people call me call me call me dirty and just make in front of me you know, dark chocolate whatever it's it, it has that effect on you that's like you you start to kind of to me i used to i used to not got you it got to a point where i got used to it i just didn't care because it was it's just oh they're just they're calling me that oh well i can't do anything about it they'll just call me more names and it's that's what it's it's kind of sad for me honestly so uh, that's all i had to say honestly i think it may not be thank as you. thank you very <laughs> much joshua and actually i think that that is um you know, actually quite quite upsetting to, to hear that you get used to the name calling and, and that sort of treatment. Um, and, and I hope, you know, when we're in the next part about what needs to, to change, you know, I hope you have some really good uh, ideas of what, what could be changed because, you know, this this can't be, you know, this, this can't go on in, in this way. You know, this is present day. This isn't some time, you know, in the 400 years of the past. This is now and that, that can't be right. Um, so thank you everybody for, for your comments and it's interesting you know there's some some themes that have come up that you've all you've all mentioned uh, about you know one of the ones of course is around you know Bath is um, it, it, it must be it's harder in some ways in somewhere like Bath because it isn't a very diverse um, city uh, and so that makes, I, I, I think I'm right in, in saying from the points of view raised, it makes that difference more apparent. Um, but one of the, the really interesting points that many of you mentioned was around how being in lockdown made you feel that you had the time to be activists. And I, I heard, you know, about to, um, you know, as young people, in today's world, you are more inclined to get involved in issues that are of real concern for you, whether or not that's Black Lives Matters or LGBTQ issues or or whatever. Um, but and being in lockdown has given you that opportunity to sort of not just be outraged, uh, outraged, but then move on, but to really sort of get involved and embedded in in this issue and to you know, maybe take it on further and to do more of that questioning about, you know, why this is allowed to, to happen and how we can change the world that, that we, we live in. Um, and, that, you know, I think I'm reflecting a little bit on some of the issues that came up before in the previous webinar uh, around, you know, sort of like the tearing down of the Colston statue, but also some of the, um, issues that came up uh, so uh, some time ago uh, I chaired a webinar which was for young people I think actually Indra you came and spoke on that one too and it's, it's interesting that sense of being an activist and being somebody who really cares about what our world is like you know it, it's still coming through um, and I think that's really that's a sort of a positive uh, and but there's so much that is, is, is wrong, so much that is negative, so much that needs to, to change. Um, I was gonna check with the other, um, with Kevin and, and Mary, if you were picking up other uh, issues that you want to, to bring to the fore at this moment. Kevin first then. Yeah, thank you, Dina. I, yeah, some, some very moving comments there. Um, it, it Obviously, uh, I can come at this from a slightly different angle, being um, uh, an openly gay man that I've I've come across abuse and um, and bigotry before in my lives. It's and it's a it's a terrible thing that in twenty twenty that you know these young people have to still endure racism and bigotry in in a society, particularly in an area as, as such as Bath. So whatever we can do as a local authority to challenge that, and I'm a big believer 
in education and education of the young people because people aren't born racist they're not born sexist they're not born as bigots so that this is a taught behavior and, it, and if we can um instill a better form of education through our society and all classes of society then i think that's something that we in the establishment can do to change people's lives for the better thank you kevin mary do you want to add anything yeah, I, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody for, for sharing your experiences. Um, it's really quite powerful to hear from everybody individually. Thank you. I guess the, the other bits that I did hear is about how sad, tired and hurtful people are. Um, and, and that is really, really powerful to hear that impact that it's having on young people today. Um, and I guess my, my other reflection um, was around the impact of the police brutality and what people are presenting as happening in your own experience within Bath and Northeast Somerset and what more we might need to be doing or we definitely need to be doing. So I guess that was, was mine, it's just the, the hurt, the sadness, the tiredness and, and how we can support doing something about it. Thank you, Mary. And I think that leads quite uh, neatly into the, the second question that's been posed to uh, the panel members, uh, which is about what what could be um, what could be done to change. So, uh, the question uh, was, what could schools, colleges, universities, and other organisations do to tackle racism and promote equality? Um, and obviously, this will give you an opportunity as well to share uh, anything that um, you're already involved in or anything that you know is, is happening. So, uh, if I go through in this in the same order. Uh, if that's okay. Um, so I'll start with you, Lucia, if you can just um, perhaps give your reflections on that question. So I'm now 19 years old and I'm a second year drama school student at Rosebury for Drama School in London. Um, and I spent all of my primary and secondary school years in Bath. And teenage years are such a difficult time period because you're not quite old enough to be accepted as an adult but especially like when you hit secondary school like you're not a child anymore you're very much aware of the issues and it's shocking for me I mean with all of the Black Lives Matter stuff that I've got involved in with being part of um, Boys and Mind Girls Mind Too and being in part of the protests and other things that I've been doing it's shocking to me that at 19 years old some of my friends are shocked that this is going on, shocked with these experiences that I've been through. And it's such a surprise to them that these things are going on when they've been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. I, I, it shocks me, it baffles me that people are surprised. They shouldn't be surprised. And I think a lot of the fact that they're surprised, I think that's down to the fact that we're not educated at school with it. I mean, all of the black sort of history that I learned came pretty much from my parents and my background. I personally Jamaican, Sicilian, Indian and English. So I've got family from all over the place and they're the people that have educated me. In terms of being educated throughout my schooling, it was sort of maybe the one assembly for Black History Month, which just, it, it isn't enough. It's not enough to sort of ingrain in people's minds. And I think, I think people saying they're tired, I think that's completely valid. I mean, being an ethnic minority in Bath, you walk into the room and you're instantly standing out because of the colour of your skin, you know, and you're you're labelled in Bath as all sorts of things. And it's sort of like throughout your schooling, you're sort of always watching your back. Everything you do, you're like, are they actually doing this because they, they care about me or, or are they doing this to sort of... Um, tick a box you know and it's still the same for me at drama school I often feel like I'm showcased on like school websites or I my photos put on things but I'm sort of like but there's no one here to support me it's sort of like we need more black role models to come into schools we need people we need actual support instead of us being sort of shown as a tokenism of diversity because that sort of that's sort of one thing like it's great that schools in Bath are diverse and they're accepting different people but that doesn't mean we have people to turn to you know and support and I still in my all of my years of education the first um, ethnic minority teacher I've had is um, a teacher that I had in London um, when I was 19 years old and that was sort of the first time that in a school situation I had a role model which was a person of colour to talk to about these issues and 
that that to me is shocking and I just think that things need to change for the people that are younger than me the people after me I think it's all very well saying that everyone supports us but I think it's now time to sort of implement these role models implement the education from a young age so people know this is going on so it's no longer a surprise and it's not a thing that people sort of come to terms of this late late on in life you know but can I just ask you a little bit more, Lucia, which is about how I mean, do you think there could have been more work done in the schools you were at around Black History Month? Should it have been maybe not limited to that single month? Yeah, I mean, the whole Black History Month is a bit of a um, sort of triggering topic for a lot of mixed race, Black people, ethnic minority people, because obviously for us it's not just a month that's our lives you know and um I think that more needs to be done in the curriculum as a whole as opposed to just sort of an event once a year because people are forced to go to a short assembly which nobody really listens to and then it's sort of forgotten about for a whole nother year so that doesn't really actually make that much of a change you know hmm. thank you thank you very much Lucia uh Dee can I ask you uh to come in with perhaps your, your thoughts on this question and your experiences? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say my experience is um, probably slightly different to uh, Lucia's, mainly because I grew up in London and I moved here. So I grew up in a obviously very culturally diverse area. Um, a lot of my schools had a wide range of like children attending, which meant we had a wide range of like teachers teaching us. And obviously that meant that our curriculum and kind of our education was a little more diversified than it would have been had I lived in Bath my whole life, I'm assuming. But um, I would say I've noticed a big difference from moving from London to Bath. And even though I was fully aware that, you know, Bath is a predominantly white area, which means kind of any kind of racial kind of conversation or anything that could be diversified might not be to, might not be to that extent as it would be when I was back home um, but honestly it just feels like especially with the curriculum it feels like um, especially if we learn about stuff like slavery or civil rights we're def we're learning it through the wrong people's eyes like I myself I study history at university and coming to university that was kind of my option to kind of study the history that I wanted study what I wanted to do do it in my way and um, so far kind of all of my modules or anything that I've learned has been very Eurocentric um, and you know I've been seen through like the white man's eyes if I if I could say that um, and honestly it's just kind of it's um it's diluting like black history a little bit doing that like I could name you like five white historians whereas I could only name you like two or three black ones and honestly it's not that there's less black historians or it's not that there are less people of color that are historians it's just that people especially within history and especially within education um because the system itself not just the ed educational system but like the you know the societal system is ingrained especially in britain and especially in america it has racism entwined in its dna which i'm not saying that's a good thing and obviously people are working to fight against that but we need to work harder because we have that intertwined in our DNA it means we tend to go for more of like the history that we learn here or we tend to not want to talk about um, slavery and talk about it from the uh, point of view of someone who you know was a slave or someone who experienced something that gruesome or like someone in the civil rights that the only civil right you learn about the civil rights movement but like the two main people you learn about is Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and you don't really hear about other people on the sidelines or the other people that are fighting a different part of this uh, of the fight and it's honestly it just needs to improve and currently one of the sabbatical officers at my university is currently working on decolonizing our curriculum so that it's less eurocentric um that there is more diversity and it gives people the option and it takes away the excuse to learn about black history because black history pretty much lays the foundation of the current system that we have today if you if you look at it in terms of what's laid the foundation of our like governments buildings it was built on you know people of color people brought in against their will 
were bought to build these things and what you see today is based a big part on black history and so we need to take away that excuse and kind of see history as a whole and not just pick and choose yeah i i, I would tend to agree actually with everything you're saying d and i think it's a uh, sort of um well recognized that history tends to be uh, taught from the perspectives of the uh, the victors and i would say that's you know quite probably why the uh slant has been um through as you say white men's eyes yeah i agree so is there anything else you think could be changed actually d whilst whilst i've got you i think another thing i've what i've realized is there's a lot of um trying to change the system but there's not a lot of necessarily trying to understand why people believe what we believe because in not like in my lifetime i've come across the stupidest like when people talk to me about kind of what why they think the way they think about black people or why they think the way they think about so people of color they come up with like the stupidest reasons i remember watching a documentary on the kkk and this guy was this girl woman sorry had come up with like this excuse that like it was in the bible that black people are less than white people when it's not and i want to know why i think people need deserve to know why people have like where these stereotypes and where these stupid kind of false um origins are coming from really because i don't think they get talked about enough it's always all about change and it should be all about change but in order to change you need to know what you're changing from and because we've evolved so much i think some of what we've been believing beforehand let's say 100 years ago can get lost in translation and can get left behind but we really, really need to be like keeping that in our head when we try and move forward yeah I, I yeah I agree Dee uh, I'm going to pick up some of the comments I think after I've asked every all the panelists to speak so you know we'll probably have a bit more of a conversation uh, after after everyone's answered the, the question um, Rochelle um, so what could schools and college, what, well, what could university do, do? I've been in Bath for, since 2017, and I've never been taught by a black lecturer. Bear in mind, I do units like race and racism and, and where we talk about these issues and I'm always the only black person in the room. And I think, yes, it's important that we should have more education and people be taught stuff. But I find that the problem with, with that is the minorities are the ones who end up teaching for free like this whole black lives matter movement what's happened is that you have like many like random white people just message me teach me about racism i don't want to be a racist and you're just at that like google is is free like you can youtube this so for my area of interest is very much an ask, institution asking them themselves the questions are the black, sorry, well, black people in our institutions who are teaching us all this stuff, are they being supported with somebody who understands the experiences? Like, I just find it inappropriate that you can go to our services for well-being after, if you're, sorry, if you're sexually assaulted, you'll get asked, would you like to talk to a male or female person? You get asked that question. And I think that's a reasonable question to ask because context is important. But if you experience a racist incident, you're expected to talk to a white person about it. So you spend most of your time explaining why the situation was bad and why it hurt you, then you do actually processing the emotions. And I think what institutions, particularly universities can do is hiring or building relationships with charities that have culturally appropriate support. Because I just think, I don't know, I think it sucks. It sucks so much when you experience all these racism and you feel like because of the color of your skin, you don't belong at all. And then you have to go to someone who looks like the person who just said this awful thing to you and you have to tell them why it hurt you. And then this person gets really dispensive rather than actually supporting you. And I guess what institutions need to ask themselves now is, it's great that you're doing all these events and it's great that you're wanting to educate people and education is important, but are the people you are getting information from, are they supported? Do you have culturally appropriate support so we can like talk to someone? And is this support paid? Like, do you have paid therapists, social workers or counselors in your industries that can support black people during this time? If not, then why are you rushing to educate before you support the people who are already traumatized? 
that's just how I feel about that. Thank you, Rochelle. And and um, and I know this came up in the answer to your your previous question, but are there other things that you think uh, could be could be done to 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 help? I mean, I absolutely get that um, it is really hard to to be supported who doesn't have the same lived experience that um, live, you know that you have. I guess, honestly, for me, I think that's the most important. I can say education and I can say awareness. I can say all these other extra things. But for me, the fact that it's just hard for me to expect anything more. If you can't even hire people who we can talk to, how can you accomplish education? How can you improve the system when you can't even like support us with a simple thing? So I guess my ask is always culturally appropriate support. Get that right first. And then we can talk about the extra stuff and the and the tokenistic gestures that come with like, because at the moment it feels like my whole point here is to educate white people about racism. And I'm just like, I would like somebody to talk to about racism first, and then I'll be in a good place to ask to, to offer like what else can be improved. But until then I'm like, no, culturally appropriate support is what institutions can start with first. Let's not, run before we can walk or crawl let's crawl first and then I'll think about the rest okay I think you're getting lots of uh, messages of support on the on the chat as well Rochelle so yeah lo loads of support for absolutely everything you're saying there um, so I do hope there are people from Bath University who are watching this and if they are not then I will make sure that they are uh, sent the link to the YouTube uh, you know so they can watch it and hear directly from you. Uh, so Indra, as a member of Youth Parliament, what do you think could be done to improve the situation? Well, I think some positive steps have been taken at my school, like um, our house names were changed because we had our houses were called Pulteney, Milsom, Holborn and Crescent. And my old house, Pulteney, uh, Pulteney profited off the slave trade. Um, and this was brought forward by students themselves who are like, this is not right, we need to change our names. Um, so they wrote an open letter to the head teacher and those people signed and obviously like it was immediately like taken care of. But I think what lots of people don't realize, all of these places in Bath, these 18th century, 19th century buildings and houses were built from money that profited off the slave trade. Like we have to realize that. Um, also at my school they as well, uh, renamed our maths block, the Katherine Johnson building, who was a black mathematician at NASA. However, this still isn't enough. I think schools need to teach young people on how to call out their peers and give them the confidence to call out their friends and say, like, that's not a joke, like, that's actually racist, like, you can't say that. And then people need to stop accepting, like, casual racism because it's just not right. I also think there needs to be large acts as well. We need to embed the knowledge and learning like across society, schools and everyday life. It can't just be one flimsy PSHE lesson or one month. It needs to be embedded into everything. It needs to be embedded into every subject, English, art, geography, science, even math somehow, and most importantly, history. There's lots of opportunities for black history, but they just aren't being used. In like history at school, we could learn other things apart from just the slave trade and think about some of the issues today. And we don't learn anything about important black icons or anything like that. And the teachers maybe try and half-heartedly squeeze in a lesson, like a, a 10 minute PowerPoint that they spent like five minutes on, but it's like, you can't just rush through this. It needs to be something that's taken seriously. It needs to be embedded into everything. Like can't be one month, has to be everything. We must not just be content with one small thing. We have to do so much more. Thank you. Thank you, Indra. And I was seeing lots of nods and the panelists and uh, and again, comments, you know, supporting comments in, in the chat as well. And I think that the point you make actually about renaming you know, a building such as the maths block after a black mathematician, I think must be really powerful and must be really helpful in, in starting to have those conversations about, uh, you know, uh, the, the impact that people of all colours have had on a, a whole wide range of subjects, because none of this is the province of just the, and I'm sorry about this, but just the white man. It's, you know, it is, you know, that women and black men and women have all been um you know have changed the world and but we 
uh, you know, tend to only learn about a very narrow uh, portion of of, um, of of that in in, in a, a range of subjects, whether or not that's science or or history or maths or or wherever. So I'm glad to see some of that work is really paying off at your school, Indra, and maybe other schools will, you know, be able to learn from from that example. So, Ben. Hi. Um. I just thought, say, first of all, guys, really good, really good points. Just like them. <laughs> I just thought I'd like to say that. Um, second of all, I think what some people, like I, I love answering questions from people when they ask like, oh, what do you think about this? Or I didn't know, so I didn't know you went through this or that. It's like, well, obviously, yeah, you might not know some of this stuff and that's not necessarily like your fault. Sometimes it's, you just haven't been taught it. Like, you know, it's not embedded into your education or your parents or your family aren't, natural to talk about it and that's one thing i think a lot of people regardless of race but i guess obviously in this case it, those who aren't like mixed black or whatever are too afraid to talk about these subjects because not only is it that they like fear the past and they fear that like some that they're to blame like the current like day people but also i feel like um they feel as if they might be saying the wrong things or not knowing what to say exactly. And obviously that's quite, you know, that's that's quite a shame to be honest, but that's why we have these chats. That's why we have these people talk and like represent themselves. And people shouldn't be afraid. I mean, I'm glad people are, are interested. I'm glad people are asking questions, but you don't have, I think that's the main thing. You don't have to be afraid to join a cause just because you don't think you're a part of it. That's the re whole reason why people pro like, you know, rise up and like go to protests and everything just to help other people. Um, my main thing about like, yeah, about stuff that can be done in Bath and within like schools and stuff like that, obviously just keep consistent. I think it's obviously hard to like, especially if you're not like someone who is like uh, from a certain group to write about other people because it's you might not understand their, you know, their circumstances, but then, if that happens, just bring in more people, like bring in people from those groups, bring in more black teachers, practitioners. I've barely had anyone that's been like black or white diverse, uh, diverse teacher. And like, that's not necessarily a, too much of a problem, but yeah, it is quite hard to relate or to think of them. Uh, like to think, oh, my next class, it'll be with, you know, this, it's just mostly unlikely. So when I do see people from, you know, different ethnic groups, it does get me a little excited because I just think, oh, it's just nice to see someone like that and they're in that position and they've made it through without any, like, they face adversary, adversary of course, but, you know, they've been able to go there. Like, especially for me as a young uh, mixed race person who wants to be an actor when he grows up and maybe do directing and writing, it's nice to hear from those who also, like, share the same interests and are, like, in my kind of group and in my kind of circle and I've you know, often being played to certain parts that like, say like a certain, maybe a white person gets a part that it's not necessary due to race, but sometimes some people get pushed over others. It's just how it is. So I think things that just need to be more constant are just more awareness about it, more talk in schools, obviously, as people have been saying, um, maybe more events such as like charity, um, uh, yeah, I can't speak. Uh, some charity things, uh, maybe some music or art events, things like that. Whatever people can do to get involved, whatever people thinks good, just you know, talk to us. So that's it. Thank you, Ben. And do you think that if you'd seen more people who you could have related to, and and this I guess applies to uh, other uh, maybe maybe your friends or or people that you know, do you think then their, their choices of what they want to do in the future might have been different? Of course. Yeah, if there were pe more people like, yeah, of course, if there are people more that like um, different diversities and stuff like that, of course, they'd have different opinions, maybe and like different things they want to do in the future. But it's good to at least know them or at least have a wider sort of like wider group I can sort of relate to and talk to uh, just about because there are days where like I, I can discuss some things, but sometimes some people like just hear it as like, it's quite hard for them to hear almost. So like, it, rather than sort of 
being able to make points like it's good to listen but if you feel like you want to say something try and do say something but obviously just be mindful of what you're thinking so yeah thank you very much ben and um oh, just on this question joshua what, what are your what are your thoughts on what could uh, what could change uh well my thoughts are is to um not just focus on when because when i was in year eight we focused on black history. We only focused on slavery. And that's, it's kind of, it's degrading in a way to think that, that our only history is slavery and the struggle to get, to gain rights. There's, cause there's so much more in Africa than we have so much cultures. We have created villages of so many wonders in Africa. For example, Shaka Zulu and his uh, bull tactic that even de defeated the British in one battle and is, I believe that um, just to spread more and learn about the culture of Africa, just to learn. Cause so, so I don't like based on Indra's point earlier that some teachers aren't motivated to, um, to and if they are, if they, they say they, they are like a, a peer group, um, a peer from black family said, uh, that her teacher was said that they would try to squeeze in a um, a lesson based on Black history, and I th and I think that's it's kind of it's it's not right. Just to, I think they should uh, widen the curriculum, saying at least have that history because you see his people's ancestors, like in history, like the um, 1066 Bat uh, Battle of Hastings. And some of uh, my classmates' ancestors were probably part of that battle. And I can't, and they take pride in that. Whereas when when it's um, my history, like Black history, I don't, I can't. It's, it stops me from taking pride in the fact that my ancestors. It's you can't be written that there were slaves. Like my ancestors were slaves. They were in, enslaved and taken to this new country where they were treated like worse than dogs. It's it's the great honest. I think the. Um, we should uh, try to just expand uh, the curriculum and learn more, uh, not just about slavery and just the whole whole of Africa and, the, and its culture. So that's, that's my main point I have. It's not long, I have Thank you, Joshua. And actually, this might be a question you, it'd be really interesting to hear what um, your answer on. So, and this is picking up a point that was made by one of the panel, uh, one of the uh, members of the audience, um, which is around uh, Haile Selassie. And so he was um, an African emperor who uh, lived for some time in Bath. Was he somebody that you were taught about at all at school? I have, I, no, I have, I was, I wasn't taught about him at school. I haven't been. In in Beijing, they don't they don't teach it. They teach basically basically only British or Europe like the white man's uh, history basically at that school. Okay, so I I don't know if you're aware, but there is a um, uh, a there is uh, some some information that can actually come to uh, to your school and indeed to all schools uh, around uh, you know what has. Um, the importance of Heine Selassie, um, particularly to, um, uh, to, you know, in terms of religion, as well as, um, as a uh, very prominent um, uh, person of, uh, who, who came from, from, from Africa as well. Uh, I, I can, I'd like to bring Chris in now, actually, to find out what, to, um, so Chris, if you'd like to just introduce yourself, uh, Chris Wilford. Uh, and because obviously you do a lot of work with schools and it'd be interesting to s hear from you about how much, um, you know, this, this time around, Black History Month, you would have expected it to have, have changed. Hi, Chris Wilford, I'm a Director of Education for Baines and just wanted to say, um, uh, well done to everyone who's been on the call. It's been really, really interesting and fascinating to hear from you. And um, I think I think it's there's been some really, really good points that have been made on the call today, and um, you know, really 
fascinating to you know that desire that for there be more diversity in the Black History Month and for us to try and challenge ourselves to to go beyond what we traditionally might um, try and teach. I can't personally speak for every school is doing, but I know that um I know that we're certainly in Baines trying to promote a, a, a more expansive approach to that. Well, just a couple of thoughts and reflections for myself, really. It's really sad to hear some of the stories uh, on that and and some of those things. And, you know, racism existed at school when I was at school. And it's really sad that a long time or forwards into the future that, we, you know, we still experience these pro problems. We've, we've got a long way to go um, and we have to keep challenging ourselves to be better and to find um, ways of, uh, of kind of, um, <laughs> of, of making this stop. Uh, and some of the things which I took away on the call there um, is around that supporting peers to challenge other peers. It's really, really powerful when peers are able to turn around and say that's not okay. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing so we can educate each other. And I think we need to find more ways of supporting children and young people and skills to be able to um, be more confident to speak out. And I know that's, that's one of the pieces of work that Baines is uh, doing. Um, in schools at the moment. And I also heard more about um, more culturally appropriate support. So for me, being on this being on this call is an opportunity to be educated myself and to learn and listen to, engage in the conversation and take that back to my uh, peers in education so I can follow that up and, and find news way through it. So really, really interested to hear all these calls in there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Um, and actually, yeah, just picking up some of the other points that have been uh, brought up in the chat as well. Uh, so I know that there's the, as I'm sure many of you uh, on the panel are aware, Bath is a, a World Heritage Site and there's a World Heritage Site Advisory Board uh, and they're doing some work on the, the impact of, um, you know, the, the slavery trade in um, the 18th century. And, you know, maybe that might be another place for you to have you know, share your, your views actually, because I strongly suspect that there are no young people, let alone any uh, young black people on that, that panel. So um, I'm very happy to advocate for, for you to, to be involved in that. Uh, and then in terms of work that the, the council itself is doing, we are setting up a race panel and you know, currently we've uh, gone out to um, look for members of that panel. And obviously I don't want anyone to feel that they're being invited as a token, but I do want to invite you to come and be part of that work. Uh, and uh, I know that when we put up the webinar on YouTube, there'll be some, some links up there as well, uh, you know, so that you can get involved too, because I think that's another opportunity about making change. Um, because I think if we don't seize these opportunities, this just ends up being a discussion and then nothing, nothing changes and there is no difference made. And I would hope that you would all want to, to be making uh, change so that others don't have to go through, you know, the same things that you've gone through. And I, and I guess that's the other point I wanted to draw out that despite, you know, your different backgrounds, there's, you know, a market... Um, similarity of experience and again I, I find that a, you know quite distressing I think you know that this is still such a feature of modern day life in Britain and in, in Bath and you know we do need to do whatever we can to, to change that. Um, so I'm now going to just uh, you know open up to, to see what uh, Kevin and, and Mary have uh, to, to say just you know based on what you've heard and see if you've got uh, any additional comments that you want to add um so if i take kevin first because he always looks like he's very you know eager to, to press the unmute button <laughs> thank you dina and thank you for everybody that really really insightful stuff um you know, i think i'll try and be a bit uh, practical here so rochelle you brought some really good points about diversification at the university and I'm on the court there, so maybe we can um, exchange some emails and, and, and I can take the message straight to the governing body for you and we can look at how we can improve their diversification of staff. I think that'd be a really good thing to do. Um, Joshua, you, you, I'm, I have a, a history degree, so the battle you're on about was Isan Luana, where um, 
a very uh, stupid white general uh, underestimated his African opponent and cost cost him very dearly. Um, so I think uh, I think it was um, I think my dear you might have mentioned about um, black historians etc. Um, I, I can um, remember learning about black politicians and things like that. But what the story that really got me um, moved was the Rosa Parks story because it was a true story, it was a real life story. So maybe something we can do in Baines is is try and find with with with, with your help uh, a local story that we, we can disseminate to our schools that will really pro provoke um, emotions and thoughts rather than the big the you know uh, Martin Luther King etc. Rather than talking about them, we could talk about a local story and that might help uh, get the message out. So those are just a few things that I picked up. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much, Kevin. And for those that joined the call a bit late, uh, Kevin Guy is the cabinet member for, for Children's Services. Uh, and I'll just like to ask Mary, who is the director for Children's Services, uh, for any, any comments that uh, she might like to make. Yeah, thank you, Dina. And again, thank you to all our contributors. Um, and it, it is really, it's really to reflect on what that experience has been and where some of the changes could happen. And I guess one of the things that really struck me was around um, having, having colleagues across our entire culture who young people can look up to and or have a relationship with. So the, the, I, I guess I was really struck by having a cult culturally appropriate support across our system and what that might look like either in schools or colleges or the university, or indeed in our communities. Um, and I guess just reflecting what more we could do to join up some of the work with university with some of our, our voluntary and community sector, as well as the local authority where we do have colleagues who may be able to support in a slightly different way. So really interested to hear, and I, and I, th I think the fact that I've also heard is about celebrating the culture, not just Black History Month, it is about how we embed that into our curriculum in the broadest sense. Um, so we, we've, we've got a bit of work to do, that's what I would say. But listening to those young people, um, I think there's some very good ideas that we could take forward. Thank you, Mary. Um, so I wonder if uh, anybody's got anything else they want to, to add, anything that we've not spoken about? Because I know that you were set these two questions, but there might be other you know things that you'd like to to bring up now so you know perhaps if you just want to put your hand up Rochelle and then I will go straight to you um I think for me what I wanted to say thank you for recognizing how important um having culturally appropriate support is not just an exa and I and I just wanted to say that like obviously for me this is a very important thing and something that I've always been fighting for it's just University is hard, harder than I ever expected it to be. I didn't expect this much racism and I didn't expect to be called all these things so much, like all of the time. And the fact that I, like two years ago when I asked for this, people thought I was crazy. They were like, why do you need a black person to talk to? Why do you need this? And sometimes I just feel so like overwhelmed and weirded out now that when I say it, people are like, oh, that makes sense why would you <laughs> so i guess for me it's just like the fact that people are actually realizing that it's important for black students to have somebody to talk to who isn't white and is going to explain to them what racism is is um really important but i just wish i hope that this because uh, somebody asked the question about what little thing that they can do to kind of like make a difference and i guess for me is to hold people accountable like all the thing, every time somebody says we're doing this, ask them, what did you do for Black History Month? Ask what your people and your friendship did. What do you do? What are you doing to support people in our community? Like, when are we gonna hire a black counselor to support our black students? When are we gonna hire, maybe like, maybe we're gonna pay that youth worker who comes and volunteers here to talk to the students about their experiences. Maybe we're not gonna invite students to do a, a focus group and not pay them for their time. Maybe we're actually gonna start investing in people and rewarding them anytime they want to make a change because at the moment it's like is expected to do all this work for free while still suffering and it sucks 
So maybe the little things that people can do is just ask those questions. Are the people being invited being paid? Uh, are the people being invited supported? Do they have someone to talk to? And if they don't, what can I do to make sure that we can get that? Not, oh, we might do this, or we're gonna do this, but this is what we are going to do. And I don't care if it's small or whatever, I just, just something, it's better than nothing. <laughs> Hopefully that makes some sense. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Rochelle. And, you know, as ever, actions speak louder than, than words, because we can discuss these things till, they, till the cows come home. But, you know, we actually do need to get on and do something. Um, so any other comments from any of my other panellists? Lucia? I just wanted to mention, it had been mentioned previously, but for people um, who have joined the call recently, um, so I'm here representing Boys and Mind, Girls Mind too, and my uh, friend, who's a fellow youth advisor for the charity, um, who's called Eli, who can't currently be on this call today, unfortunately, um, he basically has put together a project where there's a video of young people talking about racism that they've experienced in Bath, um, which is on our charity website. Ben on this call was involved in it, and so was I, and it um sort of very informative of issues that it seems that a lot of people on this call sort of have faced and gone through so um i just wanted to mention the video for people that haven't seen it um but yeah to have a look okay and we'll make sure we put that link up with the with the youtube um uh, you know on, a, on our youtube uh channel um, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's a really, really moving um, video. So, um, and well done to, to Eli and for everybody who was involved in that in that film as well. Thank you. So I'm just quickly whizzing through the screens to see if um, I have anybody else who'd like to, to speak. Oh, sorry, I nearly missed you. Dee. Yeah, no, I think it was, what I want to talk about was like briefly touched upon, but it's about like pointing the blame because obviously um, we were talking about the protests and um, kind of people saying, oh, had they been a bit more peaceful, um, you know, people wouldn't be so, you know, retaliate towards, you know, black, black protests and stuff. But obviously at this point it's not about pointing the blame because obviously people are more than happy to say oh because we're just a little bit violent when it comes to or a little bit passionate when it comes to what we want to achieve when we have these protests but when it comes to especially in america when it comes to like you know judging let's say the police force or kind of the you know what's the word um justice system in terms of like their kind of violent um, that they have inflicted or kind of any kind of harm that they either directly or indirectly brought upon people of colour and obviously I think people are so used to especially historically people are so used to using black people or people of colour as a scapegoat instead of you you know taking the time to address their own issues that um, at this point it's become like a bit of a self safety belt for them to go oh you know when it came to George Floyd, you know, I saw like too many posts saying, oh, George Floyd was a criminal, George Floyd had done this, George Floyd had done that, in order to just go in, in you know, instead of people just going, what that policeman did was wrong. And um, because it's become such a safety blanket, I think people need to up and, you know, they need to, I think we need to remove that excuse from them. Like we can't, they can't keep using that as a scapegoat because there's only so far that that can take them. And I think we need to start talking about why people want to pass the blame instead of dealing with their issues, because, you know, passing the blame does not solve the issue. It just leaves us in a it it puts us in a cycle and nothing gets sorted. And yeah, I just want to kind of want to spread that out there a bit. Hmm. Yeah, that's really great, um, Dee, and, you know, really uh, kind of useful and a bit of a and quite thought provoking as well about that that a portion of, of blame um, because and I, I think I can't remember who <coughs> uh, said it before but there's also that uh, you know when when you're talking about how you feel about a situation there's tends to be or you're experiencing or said you've experienced a sort of a defensive um, 
uh, reaction, at, you know, from as opposed to, you know, and it's almost like, you know, that explanation of, oh, which is, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah, sorry, that, uh, an explanation of um, why that reaction or why you may have experienced that and that that can't be fair. So again, you know, we need to kind of be able to, to move on from that and be able to um, accept that is absolutely how someone feels and and actually deal with that in, in an appropriate manner and with, um, you know, that appropriate support as well, which I, you know, something I know Rochelle particularly has been, you know, speaking um, about and, and advocating for, and I know Kevin is going to take up that, um, that, that mission on your behalf and, uh, and and make it happen, Kevin. Okay, so do we have any and um, any more contributors, Ben? Would you like to speak now? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I almost forgot what to say. I think it's first of all, I've just been I'm really happy just to be on this call, just because it's been like it's really nice to go and talk through things and talk from like like-minded uh, people. And I think any any people who right now are just kind of like um, like those who feel either a little confused, a little scared, I would say just take lessons like this into strength. And for example, a lot of people are asking about what's gonna like, what should we do in Bath? And it's not gonna be easy, just like it's not easy just to do it around in any country or in any one place. So I would say like, just just from you being here it's helping already because that's just sort of helping show like yeah it's gonna start things are start gonna change from here just from you watching and like responding and asking questions so i'd say it's just the mouth like you know keeping how do i put it or just carrying on and for example things that will help having a lot more black representatives and other minorities and people LGBTQ plus everything, all that kind of things. People just being represented more in any itch, any which place, so it feels more like a rec, like a regular society, a more diverse society. So people in schools, people in work, people in um, public places, public transport, whatever. It, it doesn't matter, but just as long as people have places, especially as we all are in Bath, so it feels less awkward in a way. So people don't have to feel more afraid and people don't have to feel like they have no one to turn to or have very few chances. So I think it's up to just all of us here and all of those out there just to sort of keep asking these things, keep promoting these things. If you people are at school, for example, don't be afraid to talk to your peers or don't be afraid to talk to your teachers about this kind of stuff. If you're at work, don't be afraid to talk about those your managers i mean <laughs> i mean obviously i can imagine it can feel scary uh <laughs> i mean i'm i mean myself i'm like one of the only few like um mixed or like black other people in my work and stuff like that but honestly i think it's just it's just glad to be just to see these people and talk to them and yeah that's really all i have to say thank you ben and you know i would say also make sure that you kind of echoing what what you've said there is make sure that you um kind of keep everybody involved in that conversation because you know certainly myself i i can't know unless you tell me uh, i'm just having one last look to see if there's any more people who want to uh speak up now Okay, so um, I'm just going to have a quick look through the, the comments and see if there's anything else I wanted to uh, bring to the panelists' attention. I think, um, you know, there's been quite a lot of response to, uh, from the panel on the chat anyway. So I think most of the points that have been made have been recognised by the panel uh, and, uh, you know, and certainly been picked up by um, uh, also by everyone else who's, uh, you know, is... Um, watching and uh, looking at the chat as well. And I just want to say actually, so uh, Paul Satterley um, has raised some, some really good examples um, 
that I, I suspect also are not covered in the traditional curriculums. Uh, people like Rosa Parks, people like, I um, oh, saw another one just a moment ago, who's, uh, yeah, as I said before, Haile Selassie, uh, yeah, and there'll be plenty of other examples locally as well who you know whose whose names are probably not um you know on the tips of everyone's tongue you know in in our in our schools in our colleges or or indeed at, at university unless you're studying a specific course um yes and thank you yes that's uh, uh you know absolutely so the the bristol bus boycott as well you know is another excellent example you know where speaking out makes a difference and, you know, and I hope that we can all make sure that we speak out and can continue to speak up for, for you know, equality and making, you know, just everything better. Uh, so uh, I think we're rapidly running out of time. But so can I say thank you very much to everybody who's been on this on this panel today. It's been an absolute pleasure and a real eye opener as well to, to hear from you, to hear your experiences and also to hear what you would like to change. And I would hope everyone that's in a position to do so will take away those points and, and work with you and for you to make those, those changes. Um, so I'd just like, I'll just quickly go through the room and say thank you to Ben and thank you to Rochelle and to Indra, Dee, Lucia, um, and to Joshua uh, for your, your really, really valuable input into into this uh, discussion and I'd also like to thank uh, Chris and Mary and and Kevin for for the work that you're going to be doing on this uh, so thank you everybody and it's been um, really lovely and I hope um, I'll see you all again on a future webinar sometime soon so thank you everybody and uh, good night to everybody thank you Jane